In this lesson, we shall focus on mathematics. MATH 141 Calculus UKZN. We shall look at techniques of integration and a lot more. Right. Um, last time, we actually looked at question one for tutorial four. Okay, let us uh, decide together what or which questions you think are worth doing and which questions are not worth doing. Okay, for example, so please, I think that that will be important because we can look at the lesson that can do all of them. But to do all the questions, you will need like four hours. On average, we'll need a planned four hours on a tart. On average, I think. If we can spare like four hours or three hours, we can finish a tart. So that is something that we can do, but it is something that we can plan. But obviously, looking today, I don't know how much time you have now, you know. What do you think? Okay, um, for example, Okay, so if you look at question one, it was done. Question two, what do you think? How much time can you allow us to, to have now from two o'clock? Because it's just two, just after two. So that we can plan and see how much time we, we have, you know, because I'm just thinking, okay, I'm just thinking. From question eight, okay, from question eight and then third five. All right, good, good. At least that's some direction. Because so we can allocate more time to go through a whole an entire touch. Okay, let's look at question eight. We're moving to question eight. This is number Seven, eight. Okay, good. Let us look at question eight. Now, question eight is as follows. Evaluate this integral here using a trigonometric substitution. And then in B, we shall look at the method of partial fractions. But obviously, the two methods converge in terms of the answers being similar or identical to each other in a way or equivalent solutions okay now to do this one to look to do a trigonometric substitution you need to look at the fact that it is a sum it is a, it, it is a sum that involves a square and therefore the best uh, way to do this also to look at the degrees this is x cubed and uh, the degree of the denominator is four meaning there's no division that is possible and therefore we let would let x be equal to the tangent let x be the tangent of theta now if x becomes the tangent of theta we can write here let x be the tangent of theta which means that dx is the second squared of theta d theta Okay, okay, this is a trigonometric substitution like we saw last time. We can also use a hyperbolic substitution. Right, so at this point, we are in business. And we are able to continue and say, and do the following, yeah? Then you'd have the integral of x cubed. 
1 plus x squared dx. Right, so now we have x cubed. x cubed, it's going to be the trigonometric tangent of theta cubed. 1 plus the tangent of theta squared. What is the x? It is 6 squared theta, d theta, like so. 1 plus 10 squared is the second squared. But the second squared, squared. So this is going to be exactly the tangent cubed of theta, the secant squared of theta, divided by the secant squared of theta, all squared, d theta. And upon careful examination, this one is uh, the tangent cubed of theta, the secant squared of theta. The second to the fourth power of theta d theta. So now at this point, this is the second to the fourth power. So now if you have the second squared, it is under such that it simplifies and divides the sec to the fourth power, you would have the second squared in the denominator. And this would give us 10 cubed theta divided by the second square of theta, d theta. Okay. Because we're canceling the square with a square in the fourth power. This allows us to continue and say, this would then be what? Okay, so you need to look at this and reason and think. If you can let u be the tangent, then the derivative of the tangent is what? The derivative of the tangent is the second squared. This is tempting, but let us examine this. So if you let u be the tangent of theta, this would mean du is the second squared of theta d theta. And uh, now, what then is this? So in other words, at this point, d theta is the u divided by the second squared. Okay. This is what we have. This is exactly what we get at this point. So now we'd have to look and examine the fact that this is what we have, and this is going to be, if you substitute here, it's going to be set to the fourth power. And uh, it's going to actually take us back to what we had here. And hence, you need a different trend of thought. So, this would then become the tangent. Now, this tangent, you need to write it differently. You need to write it differently. So, you need to write it as the sine cubed divided by the cosine cubed. 1 over the cosine squared. Like this. Now, this is what we get. Okay, but now check, check, check this one out. So because the second, the second is in the denominator, the second squared is in the denominator, so this is gonna become exactly the cosine squared. Gonna come to the top like this. Because if you check, it's one over cosine. One of the cosine is going to flip and become cosine 
over 1, if you like. And uh, this which is the integral okay so if you cancel this out this is going to produce the just going to produce cosine theta d theta just that way okay now, at this point, you need to look at these and reason. And think about what this will bring. It is tempting to use a couple of substitutions. So now what you then can do is to attempt to use a couple of substitutions. Like if you then can say, let, at this point here, let you be the sine of theta, yeah? And then du is going to be cosine theta d theta. d theta becomes du over cosine theta. So d theta will be du over cosine theta. And this is going to be u cubed. And then, if you check very carefully, what will that bring? Okay. It will not bring anything useful because it's just going to become here a u cubed. And then this one is going to become du of a cosine theta. And then the cosine, the cosine is going to become cosine squared. In which case, the cosine squared will bring what? 1 minus sine squared, which is 1 minus u. And then this is going to be the sine cubed. So obviously, you need to look at this and reason one thing you can do if you write these as sine cubed sec theta d theta what can this give because you can be able to write this as the sine sine squared and the sine of a cosine is the tan. And then the sine squared. Right. And you look at this and reason what this would mean. If this will simplify beautifully. Right. So you need to think very carefully, but we shall decide now what method is the best to use for this particular question. Right, we shall decide now what method is best to use for this particular question. So we are pondering. Right, we are trying to reason this out to see what the best way to solve this question is. Right, so we have the sine cubed, for instance, with the secant. Normally, these ones do not go together, but in case they do, the sign and the second, then you actually can be rest assured that uh, you can do something extraordinary. Okay, and by and large, it appears that what you can do here is to break the sign to sine squared and then we have the sine of theta divided by cosine theta d theta you can write it like that because the sine cubed is the same as sine squared so we break the sine cubed to sine squared and the sine over the cosine theta
Okay. Now, what do we do here? Okay, so we get to this point. But the minute you get to this point, it is clear that the sine squared can be seen as one minus whole sine squared theta sine theta over cosine theta d theta. Just that way. Exactly this way. So now you look at this and reason and look at how best this can be done. Okay. Now you can use the use substitution at this point. So if you have, for instance, the integral, one minus cosine squared theta, sine theta, cosine theta, So now, at this point, let's do a substitution here. And uh, if you let you be cosine theta, du becomes minus sine theta d theta, giving us d theta equals du divided by minus sine theta. Which is the integral of one minus u squared And then you have, in the place of d theta, you can put this, okay? But also, there are a couple of steps you, you can observe. Sine theta d theta is always du in this case. So you can always say the sine theta d theta, you can just put a du here. And then obviously in the denominator, you have the u in the place of the cosine. But simultaneously, it is very popular to replace the d theta by the fact that is du divided by minus sine theta, allowing a cancellation like this. All right, so at this point, you have the minus one over u. In other words, one minus u squared divided by minus u du. minus one on u, u squared on u du, giving us minus one on u, and this is gonna be u du, minus the natural log of the modulus of u, half u squared plus c minus the natural log of the u, and u is cosine theta, plus one half u squared is cosine squared theta plus c. Okay, okay. 
At this point, we then said X is 10 theta. X is 10 theta. So now we can use some triangles here because we know that but, so we can write a but here. But X is 10 theta. Okay, we need to re uh, put back the X in the answer. We need to put back the X in the answer, but we can see our answers in terms of theta, but the question eight was given as a function of X. So we must actually, you know, work backwards to the variable X. So in other words, if X is 10 theta, then what do we do here? What we need to do here is to examine carefully and use the triangles, you know, we know the triangles. Okay, um, if you use these triangles, you will see that uh, X is 10 theta. So this is the angle of theta. The tangent is Sokotoa. Opposite of adjacent. Opposite of adjacent. The hypotenuse therefore becomes by Pythagoras theorem, the sum of the squares on the shorter sides, which is going to be one plus x squared. Just one squared plus x squared square root by the Pythagorean theorem. This yields negative the ln. Right, negative the ln. Right, yeah. Um, yes, Shingi, I'm finishing a lesson now. Can I give you a call when I'm done? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. We'll talk, Shingi. I'll give you a call when I'm done. Okay. Okay, thanks, Shingi. All right. Okay, now we continue. Now, we need to find from the triangle cosine theta. So cosine theta, according to this, is adjacent over hypotenuse. Theta is this one, adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 1 over the square root of 1 plus x squared. Um, so the cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse here, which is adjacent over adjacent over hypotenuse. All squared, according to this. So, you have this. 1 plus x squared. You square this. Okay, so this is what we have. Right, so it is exactly the answer they gave here. But obviously, because you can see the answer is one half the ln, but because the one plus x squared is a, uh, it's a, uh, it's not negative. So that is why you we are we at liberty to put some round parentheses. As much as the more formal ones uh, is the modulus, but this expression is never negative because we're squaring all the reals. Squaring a real number makes it positive, but yeah, we get this answer. And it is exactly this. So this is the answer then that um, obviously um, was obtained. But let us go through the steps that uh, we used before we drew the triangle. We started by actually using the trigonometric substitution so to solve the problem, we then realized that it was a, a square on X and, and, and a constant, a summation. And then we then said with the summation given, we let X be the tangent of theta, whose derivative is the second square of theta d theta. Now we perform the substitution. Wherever there is X, we put the tangent. X, we put the tangent of theta. Then the dx is the second square of theta d theta, and you did that. 
substitution straight away. Now the one plus the tangent squared is the second squared. Give out the tangent cubed plus the second squared of theta, d theta. And therefore, this is the tangent uh, cubed by the second squared of theta divided by the second squared squared, which is the fourth power d theta. And this is the tangent cubed of theta, the second squared of theta. And therefore, if you cancel these two, the square and the fourth power, you get the square in the denominator. Obviously, we have to look at this and reason, you know, because as this stands, these are not bodies that go together. The tangent and the secant normally go together, but as a product. But at this point, they form a quotient. Something a bit amiss. Something a bit amiss. Right, meaning that we could think differently. But uh, these uh, problems, you can think of them in so, so many ways. You know, you can think of them in so, so many ways. Okay, but one thing we can do, uh, one thing we did, was to then say the tangent is the sine cube theta over the cosine cube, because there are many ways to kill a cat here. But the secant squared denominator, secant is one over the cosine, and it flips to cosine squared over one. And therefore, the cosine squared cancels. And therefore, you have cosine theta. The sine cubed of theta d theta. So that in the end, then you have the sine cubed, the cosine theta in the denominator is one of the cosine theta keeping us the secant. But we decided to spread this around because the sine squared can be written, the sine cubed can be written as sine squared times the sine of theta. But already the secant is one of a cosine. Right, so at this point, the sine squared is one minus cosine squared theta, sine theta over cosine theta d theta. 1 minus cosine squared sine theta over cosine theta d theta is what we're getting here. And then we have to look at this and think. Think of what to do here at this point. But what one of the things we could do and one of the things we did was to let u become the cosine of theta whose derivative is the negative sine of theta d theta. And making d theta the subject of the equation gave us d theta equals du over minus sine theta. 1 minus u squared, sine theta over u. And this cancels out. And this is what we have. So now, the integral of the 1 over u is the ln of the modulus of u, and the integral of the u is half u squared plus c which is half cosine squared theta plus c. So this is what you, you have. So now, in the place of cosine theta, now we have the triangle. This right angle triangle is right angled. So that uh, you are able to, you know that uh, x is 10 theta, but 10 theta is the same as x over 1. And opposite of adjacent, opposite theta of adjacent, the hypotenuse by the Pythagorean theorem is the square root of 1 plus x squared. And therefore, this becomes negative the ln of actually adjacent, opposite of adjacent. Or rather, because we have the cosine here, it's adjacent of hypotenuse. Adjacent of hypotenuse, because you have the adjacent of hypotenuse, you have the cosine in the ln, which is 1 over the square root. Okay, plus 1 half, same thing. Cosine theta here which is still adjacent of hypotenuse, you have the square there, 
And this is exactly one half the learn of this. And so you bring the one half it's here, it's carried forward, or it's brought forward. You square this, it becomes exactly this plus C. Okay, so I already added the C, so no point to add too many C's there. So this becomes the answer. But once again, it is exactly the same as the answer given. Okay. However, let us continue. Okay, this is the trick substitution, trigonometric substitution. We need to use the method of partial fractions. Partial fractions, yeah? So let us look at this one, partial fractions. So we have x cubed divided by 1 plus x squared squared. Let us look at these and uh, reason together. So, okay, so now, So now we, this is what we have, but we need to reason in terms of what we need to do and how this particular partial fraction decomposition needs to be done here. Okay. So right now, this is exactly the same as. It must be a x plus b divided by 1 plus x squared. Okay. Okay, continue. Plus bx plus c rather cx plus d yeah cx plus d divided by one plus x squared squared now let us uh, reason together and see what this is going to give us okay um Now, this would imply that it then implies the following, yeah? It implies that what you have here becomes exactly the following. Becomes exactly the following. Now, take a look. And reason with me. Because when you look at these carefully, what exactly are we able to see here? You are able to see that we can multiply through by the denominator, giving us x cubed. AX together with B, 1 plus X squared, CX with D. Okay. So that then by distribution, which is exactly AX plus by distribution. So we have AX and then you have AX cubed. B and then BX squared. Like this. So now, AX cubed. And then you have the BX squared. Okay. Moreover, you have the linear terms AX and CX, which would give us 
a plus c x okay Okay, so now A is one. Of course, you're comparing the coefficients. I'm gonna check this decomposition. B zero, there's no quadratic on the on the, on the left. And then we have A plus C zero. B and D zero. A is 1. If A is 1, you put it here. 1 plus C is 0, giving us C is minus 1. Okay, B is 0. 0 together with D would give us D is 0. So we got, we got all these constants. All the coefficients. Meaning our X cubed over... One plus x squared squared. It's a, a is one, which is x over one plus x squared. Minus x divided by one plus x squared. So continue. We continue. Okay, let's just check if this is correct. Is this correct? Well, it is correct. I must tell you that, but the way to check is to add. So you can do a quick check. And the quick check is by algebraic addition. 1 plus x squared squared. So you divide these by that. You get 1 plus x squared, you multiply. It's x plus x cubed. Minus x x cubed divided by 1 plus x squared squared like this. Let us perform the integration now because the partial fraction is already there. So we have the integral of x cubed divided by 1 plus x squared squared dx. The integral of 1 plus x squared dx minus the integral of x divided by 1 plus x squared squared dx. This one is easy to evaluate. Here you need to let u be the interior. 1 plus x squared. And you can do the same here as well. So you can do that. Let u be 1 plus x squared. Let's just write it that way. Or x squared plus 1, but you can write it as 1 plus x squared. du becomes 2x dx. This is the integral of x over u. du over 2x minus the integral of x over u squared. dx is du divided by 2x. You cancel this, you cancel that. 
So that now we have the integral of one half, one over u du. One half, the integral of u to the minus two du. So now, in other words, this integral here of x cubed over 1 plus x squared squared dx is equal to the integral, 1 half the integral of 1 over u du. one over u du minus one half the integral so that you have the learn of u plus one half u to the minus one plus c. Remember that, but u was one plus x squared. u was one plus x squared. So in the plus of u, we put one plus x squared. plus one half, if this is one over u, which is one plus x squared plus c. And this answer is just the same as this, just the same as that. And this is the correct answer. And this here concludes problem number eight by using partial fraction decomposition. Take a look at how we performed the decomposition process of the x cubed over 1 plus x squared squared. ax plus b divided by this. 1 plus x squared plus cx plus d divided by 1 plus x squared squared. Okay, we continue. We continue. Now move on. We move on. We move forward. Okay, the next one is Tat 5, Tutorial 5. Okay, now Tat 5 is also very important about the improper integrals, and we recap on the improper integrals. Now, these are the improper integrals of the first kind, because uh, there are two cases when this is the case. Um, it can be the lean of 1, which is 0, or zero here. So you'd advise on which ones to do. But for example, with this one in A, you have the integral e to infinity. Right, so to do this particular integral, we take the limit as b approaches infinity, e to b one over x, lin x cubed. So at this point, when you get to this, you need to find the integral of this. And to find the integral of this, what you need to do is you need to Have the integral of this
Let you build an axe. The axe. DX is XDU cubed here. X cancels giving us the integral of U to the minus three, which is minus one half U to the minus two plus C. And therefore, it's minus one half divided by the U squared, which is the lean of X squared. Plus C. B approaches infinity. So the integral of this is the same as this exactly. Which is this, which is minus one half one over the ln of x squared And this is from B to A, beginning from the margin with the, li the limit. B approaches infinity. So now, so now you have The limit. So now you have uh, the limit of E is one. So the limit as B approaches infinity is going to be zero. So this is the answer. This is the answer. So the answer is one half. The answer, because the one half is less than infinity, This one half is less than infinity. Evaluate the integrals that converge. So we're able to say, hence the integral converges. Hence the integral converges. Hence, the integral converges. So we have exactly that. Right, now we need to continue and do more. And do the next question. The next question is B. The next question is B. And these uh, ones here constitute what you call improper integrals. These are improper integrals of the first kind. Improper integrals of the first kind. Okay, obviously now we're gonna try problem B, one B, one B. 
Ryan Salt. I said we have to dedicate like four hours to finish an entire task. I'm sure we shall do that before the test. So you'd have that dx divided by the x squared plus four. So what is this? Right, what is this? So these becomes the following. Um, so B approaches infinity of the integral. Or you can call it B approaches negative infinity. It's okay. B approaches negative infinity. It's the same thing, but you can also do it uh, for B positive, etc. Okay, B approaches negative infinity. And then you have B to 2. dx divided by x squared plus 4. What is this? Okay, this one because it's the sum of squares. It's x squared plus 4. So what you do is you let x be the square root of 4, the tangent of theta. x becomes the square root of 4, which is 2, the tangent of theta. dx is 2, 6 squared theta d theta. which is 2 sec squared theta d theta. Okay, let us uh, perform the integration here. Meaning that whenever you have this integral here, the integral of dx over x squared plus 4 here yeah, it is uh, this one x squared plus four, which is four ten squared theta plus four. The the dx is two the second squared of theta d theta. So this one is like two out of four, which is one half second squared. The ten squared plus one. If you fact out the four, it's going to be ten squared plus one. And therefore, is the second squared. Second squared of a second squared is one. And therefore, the integral of that becomes theta plus c. And what then is the theta? What then is the theta? From this, it is clear that theta is arctan x over 2. Arctan x over 2 plus c. Meaning this becomes the limit as b approaches minus infinity. What is this uh, particular integral? Is 1 half arctan of x over 2. Okay, maybe let me write this at the bottom, beginning from the margin. So I can write a bit more clearly. Right, okay, we are one minute, one minute. So you have therefore that this here is the limit as B approaches minus infinity. And uh, it becomes exactly one half octane of X over two and uh, it is b to 2, like this. The limit b approaches negative infinity. And uh,
which is exactly actan. You put two here, it's going to be two over two, one. Minus actan of B over two. Okay, so what is octane of one is pi and four. Octane of infinity. Octane of infinity is pi on two. So pi on four minus pi on two. From one quarter, you remove one half. You're going to be left with minus pi on four, which is minus pi on eight. And the minus pi on eight becomes the answer. Okay, you need to check this against the, the, the tart. You need to check this against the tart. Yeah, hello, hello, just one minute, please. You need to check this against the tart. You need to check this against the tart. So now the answer must be close to this one minus pi on eight. So we need to check this uh, this answer and see if this answer is correct. So you have the integral here of uh, minus infinity. You have the integral here of minus infinity to the two. Which is one divided by x squared plus four. Okay, which is three pi on eight. Ah, okay, this is minus infinity. Check this out. So this is minus infinity. So if this is minus infinity, you put it here, it, it's going to become minus minus giving us a plus. Yeah. And when it gives us a plus, this is going to become a quarter plus pi over two, which is three pi on eight. Which is three pi on four, excuse yeah. 3 pi on 4. Yeah, 3 pi on 4. Because it's it's one quarter minus two quarters and then three three quarters of pi. And therefore it becomes exactly three out of eight. Okay. So you have three pi on eight. So so it's three pi on eight, and therefore this becomes the answer. Becomes exactly the answer. So think about this and make sure you understand it. Because I'm going to be right back. I need to open the door for someone. Somebody's knocking on my door. I need to open. And then we're going to continue and do part C.
اه اي زد اوكي نو بنشوف كوميتي تيرانج كوميتي تيرانج Because I'm in class now. So yeah, think about it. Okay, yeah, I'll just bring to someone. My apologies. Okay, so now, let me see. Okay, we can do one C, then two F and G, yeah? Okay, it's fine. But yeah, let's do one C, then two F and G. My apologies, I was just bring to somebody because somebody just came knocking on my door. Um, okay, we continue. Let's do one C. Let me see. Let me see. I need to make sure I understand what you mean. Oh, you mean you meant one E, one E. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, so let us go to one E. One E. Okay, good. And once again, these questions we can de dedicate like four hours to do a full tart. Just playing around with the questions to make sure that you understand everything. Now let us do, for example, one E. And then now to do one E, the couple of things that are very important. So the way we're gonna do this one, we're gonna use um consider this as an improper integral of the first kind. So this is also an improper, improper integral of the first kind. Meaning therefore you have the limit, B approaches infinity. Okay, first things first, we can write out the, the question. So it is standard in mathematics to do the integral minus infinity to infinity. And then you have e to minus the ln dx. We shall have also an evening lesson today. But yeah, but our evening lesson can only start after 10. So now this would be what you we can do. Because it, in this case, you have minus infinity to infinity. And so what you can do is to write these as the integral from minus infinity to zero. E to this dx. And then we have the integral from zero to infinity of E to that dx. So now, right, we continue. Now, if you check this particular integral, because here it's within the interval must infinity to, infinity to, to zero, meaning x is negative. x is negative. Which means, therefore, if the modulus of x is negative whenever x is negative, it is x whenever x is greater or equal to zero. So this one now is going to have negative, negative, giving us a plus 
dx plus the integral from zero to infinity. And then you'd have, for example, this one from zero to infinity means that x is greater or equal to zero and therefore the modulus is just going to become exactly minus x dx like this. So that in the end, this is what you're getting. This is what you're getting. So this would therefore mean you have the limit B approaches negative infinity. B to zero. E to the X DX. And then you have the limit. B approaches. Can use a different symbol here if you want, B and C, for example. So it's going to become, for instance, C approaches infinity. Zero to C, E to the minus that dx. which is e to the x from zero to c. Now, if we continue with that up here, This is going to give us. May I ask? Yes, please. Yes, we to uh, change the. You see, since it has a negative infinity to infinity, so it yes. has to change it to negative infinity to zero, and then zero to infinity. Yes, please. Yeah. Why don't you just use the infinities as they are and then substitute into negative b to b? Yes, okay, that's a good question. Well, the reason why I change them is because of the absolute value. Because you see, now the question becomes what is the integral of this alone? You know? Because there's no there's no way we can integrate this one. Um, there's no way, there's no formula for integrating the absolute value because it appears and that is the reason why to, I had to break it apart because there's no way you can be able to get the integral of this without breaking this apart. The first, uh, to find the integral of this, you would have to find the integral of what? Of this one and the integral of this one. So, and then you need to break it into two pieces. Why? Because of the absolute value. Okay, because the question remains, okay, we can do minus B to B, yeah? But still the question is going to become, what is the integral of the... What is the integral of the... Of the E to the minus modulus of x dx, what is the integral of this? You see that? So this integral itself is going to become a mystery to do, and you have to break it uh, to the positive part and also the positive and the negative, according to the definition of the absolute value. At this point, you have the following. Minus infinity to infinity. Dx. Mm. 
B approaches minus infinity of the integral e to the power x from 0 to B the integral C approaches infinity. And then the, for the C, you have minus e to the power minus x 0 to C. Minus e to minus x 0 to C, giving us the limit. B approaches negative infinity. So now, which is e to the this, e to the minus zero. So now if you take the limit, if you apply the limit as b approaches negative infinity, this one is going to be e to the negative infinity minus one plus, here you'd have minus, okay, this one is going to be infinity. You get the point, which is e to the infinity minus 1. Zero minus 1 minus infinity minus 1. Minus one plus one zero and then it's minus infinity. So this one is divergent. So this one is divergent. Okay, now there are some applications I'm gonna teach you on how we can do these integrals. Okay, just one minute, let me uh, do something here. Okay, uh, there are some applications I'm gonna teach you on how to Shine. Yes. Can Please come again. Okay. We'll see that. Okay, just one minute. Right. I want to just evaluate the E now. is the absolute value of x. Right, so okay, check this out that this is more error. There's a small error here because the, the C approaches infinity. So you're going to have here minus infinity. Making this a zero. And therefore, this is going to be that. Plus, so it's going to be There's a small error I need to just to rectify here. E to the B minus E to the zero. And then now, and this is a plus. But I put out the minus. Right, and this would give us zero plus one. Okay, this is a small thing I need to just verify here. Something is not adding up. Um, something is not adding up. Because this is minus, infi minus infinity to zero, which is exactly this here plus this one here, 
So this is all fine. The integral is okay. And then we adding here, which is the negative put out here, which is e to the minus c minus that. So now in the end, then you come here, if you take the limit, it's gonna be e to the minus, e to the minus infinity minus one. It's gonna be a one. Okay, guys, um, the result must be two. So something is not, something is not adding up. I need to check, check, check this out. I need to check this out. Because I'm expecting the result to be to just one second. Let me check, cross check. If I miss the number, okay, you can use this in the meantime. Okay, I need to just check if the numbers add up correctly. Minus infinity to zero, and you have minus infinity to your, and here, once again, you said that minus infinity to zero means x is negative, it's gonna be minus, and then there's a minus giving us a plus. And this is gonna be minus. And this one is gonna be zero to b, uh, b to zero. Okay, let us check this out. So at this point, this is going to be exactly from B to zero. Oh, okay. There is the there is the reason for this. Because this one is B to zero. It's B to zero. And this one is zero to C. So this one must be B to zero. It must be B to zero, but we wrote it the other way around. I was wondering why that. So it's going to be B to zero. It was switched around. B to zero, then it's going to be zero and B. Okay, so now it's going to be fine. I was wondering why the things, uh, the numbers were not adding up. So that this is going to be convergent. So now this one here is going to be this one, the e to zero is one minus e to the minus infinity. And this becomes one minus zero. And this is exactly one plus one, which equals two. Okay. Yes, it's okay like that. It can be minus b. We can do it like that. Let us do it differently. For example, you can consider this as minus infinity to this, e to the minus that dx. We can do it minus infinity to zero. dx plus, because of the absolute value, we break it apart. We break it to the negative and the positive. Um, so, Okay, you can write it like this. Then you can write it as the limit as b approaches infinity. Meaning you have minus b to zero, e to the minus dx, and then you have the limit, which is zero to B okay 
But it's simultaneous at the point that you have minus infinity to this, you realize therefore that the negative negative is going to make this a plus. So that this one is just going to be e to the power x. And this one is going to be negative. Like that. And so if you do the integral of this, it's going to be the limit b approaches infinity, which is minus b to zero, b approaches infinity. Okay, you are, here we use the b, but I mean, it makes sense to use a different variable. Doesn't matter, you can still use b, yeah? You can still use b is popular, b is popular. Meaning that you have this zero to b. Mean, yes, please. If can you please me explain the past value I got? You see the absolute value of the negative, oh, negative x, yes. So like, how did you get e to the power x? And then the other one you got e to the power negative x. Okay, yeah, because the definition of the absolute value is such that the absolute value is x whenever x is greater or equal to zero, it is minus x whenever x is negative. So now, obviously, when the interval of integration is, because the, the absolute value depends on the sign of the x. You know, so now, whenever you are integrating between minus infinity and zero, it means that x is negative. Here it means that in this interval, it means that x is what? X is negative, but here it means X is positive. So if X is negative, okay, so when X is negative, now it means what? X is negative, then the absolute value is negative. The absolute value of X is negative X. You get the point. When the absolute value, if x is negative, like between minus infinity and zero, x is negative. These are negative numbers between negative infinity and zero. Negative infinity and zero, here you have negative numbers, but from zero to positive infinity, these are like positive numbers. So these are negative numbers, meaning the e of minus the absolute value of x is going to be e of minus the absolute value of x is going to be negative so that it becomes just e to the power x so this one is going to be e to the power x and then whenever now you're integrating from zero to infinity zero to infinity it means that the x is a positive here when the x is a positive then the absolute value of x is just going to be x which is e to the minus x which is e to the minus x. So, so yar, okay, good. So this one is gonna be e to the minus x. I'm just using the, the notation of the fact that we can just write everything b to infinity and then put minus b here and put b there. So this is what we have. So now this one is going to be b to infinity. And then if you substitute, it's going to be e to the 0 minus e to minus b. Plus the limit as b approaches infinity of e to the minus b 
minus e to the minus zero. What is this? This is the limit. The e to the zero one minus yes see okay just one minute so now we're gonna have that exactly right so we have the following right we'll just continue now so we'll just substitute everything and get the answer just a minute just a minute Right, just one minute. Okay, so yeah, they, they are. Okay, we're just uh, sorting somebody out. So you're fine, right? Okay, good. So now you're going to have this one, which is e to the minus infinity. Ah, this integral is going to be negative. It's going to have a negative, meaning this one is going to be negative. Which is e to the which is 1 minus 0. And then this is negative. So now this becomes negative zero minus one. Okay, because the interior infinity is zero. So that in the end, this is one plus one. Negative by negative is plus, one plus one becomes two. Meaning in, in particular, this integral here is convergent. Is convergent. So yeah, think about it. Make sure you understand it. And then think about which other question we need to do now. Think about which other question we need to do right now. Which other one do you think we need to do? Which other one do you think we need to do? Okay, then you said F and G. Okay, good. So now we can do F and G. Let us do F. To do F, we have the integral. Right, we have the integral. Is it coming? All right. So we have the integral from minus infinity to infinity. Right, so now if you let u to become <clears throat> if you let u to become, for example, x cubed. So the du becomes this. Okay, so you have to do the integral x cubed e to the minus x cubed dx.
x squared e to the u dx is du over minus 3x squared du Okay, two f and g not not one. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, we're doing one g. So yeah. So let's go to two. Is it here? All right, good. So now we continue. with the other one right all right five okay we continue now to do 2f Sec X DX So what is the, the issue here with this one? How is this an improper integral? It is an improper integral because the cosecant is 1 over cosine and at pi over 2 there is a problem because the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So it's going to be zero in the denominator. So you must break it down. You must break it into two pieces. Zero to the pi over two of the second of x dx. Pi over two to pi the second of x dx. So then what are we supposed to do here? Okay, so what then this means is you have the limit. Because this one now at the greatest, at the largest limit, it is undefined, so to off, so you need epsilon approaches zero from the right zero, then you must subtract epsilon. This is called an improper integral of the second kind. Improper integral of the second kind. Right, improper. Integral of the second. Second kind. So now you need to subtract from the largest one. Take like x dx. Zero. Here, because this one is at the bottom, you need to add. Pi, and then you have like x dx. So we continue. We continue. So now, what is this? This is exactly the same as the following. So it's going to become the limit. Epsilon approaches zero from the right of the learn. Yes, please. Yes, can you please explain how um, you managed to say pi over two minus yeah. the epsilon and then pi over two 
Plus Okay, good. Yeah, the reason for that, the plus or the minus, is because of the ordering of the numbers on the real line. Because now, if you are to look at this from zero to pi over two, and this is the sort of interval we're dealing with. But it is undefined at pi over two. And if the interval is this one from zero to pi over two, it, it is undefined here. Then you must subtract here. So you must subtract. So you must subtract. Why? Because if we are, if it's undefined at the smallest value, then we add, because we must move towards into the interval. We can't go out because if from zero we can subtract, then we'll get, we'll be moving to the left. But if the interval is from zero to pi over two, we must add it to the smallest one. So we always add it to the smallest one, and then we subtract from the upper limit of integration. Here, because the pi over two is an upper limit of integration and it is undefined here at pi over two. Why? Because cosine of the, the, the second is one of a cosine, cosine of pi over two is zero. So we must subtract it from the greatest one, but also at pi over two here, this secant is undefined because secant is one of a cosine and the cosine of pi over two is zero. Meaning at the low, at the smallest one, we must add. Okay, I hope that Makes a bit of sense. But when we find the integral of this, it's going to be the ln of the second of x plus the tangent. And then this is from 0 to pi over 2 minus epsilon plus the limit as epsilon approaches 0 from the right of the ln of the second of x plus the tangent of x, pi over two plus epsilon, then pi. Okay, this is what we have. So, we must substitute everything. So the limit as this approaches zero from the right of the ln, Okay, so this becomes a secant of pi over two minus epsilon pi over two minus epsilon. Okay, so you plug in the pi over two, then you plug in the secant of zero. Okay. which is plus the limit which is the second of pi pi the second of pi over 2 plus epsilon plus the tangent of pi over 2 plus epsilon. So we continue. Which is zero to pi the secant. Which is the limit. which is the ln so this is the ln of the second second of pi over 2 minus epsilon plus the tangent of pi over 2 minus epsilon so this is pi over 2 minus epsilon 
plus the tangent of pi over 2 minus epsilon minus the ln secant is 0 tangent of 0. plus the limit is the limb of the second of pi plus the tangent of pi. Minus the lean of the second of pi over two plus epsilon. Plus epsilon. So now let us check this out when you allow the epsilon to go to approach infinity. So this one is going to be 0, 0, then it's going to be the second of pi over 2. And so the second of pi over 2 is still undefined. And this is also undefined. And then what about the second of zero? The second of zero, it's a one. The tangent of zero, is clearly a zero. And then you actually would come to, okay, we're analyzing this very carefully to make sure we actually have the correct answer. So now, Then continue as follows. Okay, we're checking this out. So we pause to check this out very carefully. Right. Okay, yeah, just a second. I'm just checking this out carefully to make sure that we're able to make the right conclusion, but it diverges either way. It diverges either way. Because as this approaches, okay, you can look at this and then divide this, whatever you do. Okay, but if you allow epsilon to approach in to zero from the right, it's going to be the learn of the second, the tangent of pi over two, the lean of one, and this one is minus one, because the cosine of pi is minus one, and then the tangent becomes zero. This is the lean of the second of pi over two when epsilon approaches zero from the right. And this is pi over two. But then in the end, And then this is the learn to 
So now, this would be what exactly? This is one of a cosine. One of a cosine of pi over two, and then this one you can see it is the sine of pi over two, the cosine of pi over two. The ring of this is zero. Zero. One over the cosine of pi over two. Which is the ln? The cosine, this one is going to be one over zero. One over zero. What is the secant of pi over two? So now you have to look at the cosine graph. Okay, this would be the cosine graph, for example. Yeah, this is at zero. Making it um, a one. Okay, if this is the graph of y equals cosine x, but now at the zero, the other one is going to have some asymptotes for the for the for this uh, second function. Right, so if this one is minus pi over two radians and this one is pi over two radians, you realize therefore that this sequence is actually potentially undefined there. But whenever you have the cosine of pi over two, for example, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, from the right, from, from the left, it's going to be, uh, for instance, infinity, but from this other side of pi over 2, it's going to be negative infinity. And so there are two ways of reaching this infinity. But because it was pi over 2 minus, it was pi over 2 minus. So pi over 2 minus would potentially therefore be less, making it infinity, making it infinity. You can take it at a stage where it is so apparent, very clear. Okay, you can then say at this point, for example, like this one here is fine, but you can see that it's gonna be the learn at this point because it's pi over two minus minus uh, epsilon, so it is uh, from the left. And therefore, if you look at it from the left, you will realize therefore that it is what? It is, uh, it is infinity. So it becomes exactly infinity. Uh, because it's the pi over 2 minus epsilon. It's like, it's pi over 2 here minus your here. And when you approach the pi over 2 like this, the graph itself approaches infinity, meaning this is going to be infinity. You have the tangent here of pi over 2. Okay. You have the tangent of pi over 2. Oh, that is something else. For this one, you have the tangent of pi over 2 in the same way. So the tangent of pi over 2 which is like this So now, at pi over 2, 
if you approach pi over 2 from the right, because it's pi over 2 minus something, pi over 2 minus, you're like here, and it also approaches infinity. And therefore, this infinity plus infinity relates to the log graph. The log of infinity would approach infinity. So either way, this is going to be divergent. But you need to check the other terms because now we're just picking up on this one. What about this one? This one is this. This one is this, and this one is this. So, but this one, you just see what you're getting here. Here you don't even get, because at pi, this is gonna be negative one. The line of negative one, but, uh, modulus so it's going to be the lean of one lean of one plus the lean of one because this is the absolute value of minus one giving us a one you are back to the other things here which is plus this time is plus so if it is this is the tangent the second graph when now we are approaching it but plus Pi over 2 plus, you are from this side, making it negative. The tangent also is plus, making it negative. Which means is the learn. Okay, and this here is infinity. All right. So now, in the end, Okay, so this is divergent because what is this? This is infinity minus, the line of infinity is infinity. The line of infinity is infinity. So what is infinity minus infinity? It is indeterminate. It is exactly indeterminate. Undefined. Think about it. Okay, let us look at the next question. So that is by and large what you're going to have here. Let me just see. Let me just check here where you sent the, where you sent the comments to F and G. Okay, let us look at this one. Now to do G, now you need to first look, what is the problem with this one? It is an improper integral, but how is it an improper integral? Which is two thirds. which is that so now in the end what then do we have here 
It is undefined at eight because whenever x is eight, then it's going to become eight minus eight, which is zero. But eight is a number that is between. So in other words, it is undefined. So yeah, it's, it makes sense sometimes to do this to be like it is undefined at the point that x minus 8 is 0, which means that x is 8. 0 to 8. Which is that Um, so okay, so you can break it down like this because the problem is at the number eight. Now, because the eight here it's it's the largest limit of integration, so you must. You must subtract from it. Take the limit as epsilon approaches zero from the right, which is eight minus epsilon x minus eight. Zero from the right. 8 minus, now this one is the smallest one, so you must add epsilon, which is x minus 8 to the power 2 thirds. So you add to the bottom one and then you subtract from the top one. Subtract from the top one, but you add to the bottom one. Because you always add to the lower limit of integration, but you always subtract from the upper limit of integration. Why 8? Because it is undefined at 8. The, you make the denominator 0, and then you can get that x equals 8. So there's a problem because 8 is the number between 0 and 9 on the real line. OK, we're good. So what is this? At this point, if you let u to be x minus 8, then you realize that it is what? It is the derivative of the x minus 8 is 1. So if you let u be x minus 8, then the derivative du is dx. So there's no point, y'all. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's, it's clear. It's clear that du dx is 1. All right, so we have the limit So now What is the integral of this? Minus 2 over 3 you add 1, it becomes 1 third and this is 3 x minus 8 one third 0 to 8 minus epsilon x minus that to one third Eight but plus epsilon in that. Okay, now if this is eight minus epsilon, you substitute. Sorry. Yes, please. Uh, I don't know. I think I can see it. It's like so, in order to find the Integration of this thing, you just added a one to the exponent. 
Yes, I just, yeah, good. We just added a one to the exponent. Why? Because if we let u be x minus 8, then the derivative, in other words, like du dx is 1. So right now, because of this, then it means that this is the same as integrating du over u to the 2 thirds. Because if the derivative of what is within the bracket is 1, then you can just add 1 to the exponent and then because now this obviously is u to the minus 2 thirds du. Same, th same thing. So you add 1 to the exponent, but also you divide like this. So if you add 1, the 1 is like 3 over, over 3. 3 over 3 is like 3 minus 2, which is 1 over 3. So it's 1 over 1 over 3, which is 3. 3 over 3, 1 over 3. Okay, so that is just going to become 3 and then 1 over 3. But also this one is just going to have the same integral. But obviously the u is x minus 8. So I just know that normally if ever whatever is within the bracket is like the derivative 1, du dx is 1, then you can just add 1 to the numerator and then divide by the, divide by the exponent plus 1. So you add 1 to the exponent and divide by the exponent plus 1. Right, so uh, uh, that makes it much, much easier. Okay, now at this point, what exactly do we achieve? We're able to achieve the limit epsilon approaches zero from the right. Okay, so this is eight minus epsilon. minus, you substitute zero in the place of the x. Okay, so I need more, I need more, 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 a little bit more. Okay, let us do this, avoid mistakes. Let, let us consider this integral here. is the limit which is 3 which is 8 minus epsilon one over three, and then this is epsilon a to plus epsilon up to nine. A to plus epsilon up to nine. Okay, then you just substitute everything, the limit. Three in the plus of x, you put eight minus epsilon minus eight. One third minus zero minus that one third. The limit epsilon approaches zero from the right. Nine minus So this minus that is zero. So you have, so now nine minus eight, it's one.
So now as this approach is zero, zero plus six, and then this one is gonna be one raised to the power one, one third, is just one times three, three minus zero. Six plus three is a nine. So indeed, the nine is correct. Indeed, the nine is correct. I think we need to take a break. Okay, we will approach it more time. We need to spend like four hours to review a an entire chart, uh, but obviously we need to plan this carefully so that we start and are able to finish that. But on average, I think to review an entire chart, it will take us nearly four hours or three three plus hours um so yeah that is the situation i think that we can take a break and then we'll come back but we will actually allocate more time to discuss the full tarts, the full tarts, so that we can make sure that we understand every single bit of the tart questions. But we also need a bit more engagement on the tarts. Um, so it's something we shall do. Right, I think that for now, let's, because it's about two hours ever since we started. I know we, we went and we took our time going through the questions, etc. But it's like two hours since two o'clock. It's now 13 past four. Let's take a break and then we'll come back and then look at Todd at Todd five. But yeah, you'll advise accordingly. Yeah, but I think that the the, the, the next target is Todd five, but it is subject to um it is subject to your suggestion. It is subject to your suggestion in terms of what you do next. Okay. Yeah, so thank you so much for now. Until our next meeting time, take care and have a good day. But yeah, sending the recording in the next couple of minutes. You can check the recording and see what you can learn from it. Right. Thanks so much for the discussion. Until next time, take care and goodbye. Bye.